This is the BGG Climbers list for the week ending 331, 2021. This list is put together every week by Michael Alexander. We'll take a look at the top 10 and also a few things outside the top 10 that I saw uh, that I thought might be interesting. I do this video every week. If you like this video, check out our other videos and please like and subscribe. So let's get into it. See what the top climbers for this week are. So first one is a notable follower. This is Spirit Island. If you actually look at the history here, I think it's probably peaked. I don't think it's going to get into the top 10. The average isn't increasing a lot. And there's actually some new games that are you know, hitting the top 10 that are going to probably keep this from ever getting in there. Uh, it's unfortunate that it's not in the top 10 because it is an amazing game, but you know, 12 and 13 is not a bad place to be out of this many games. Uh, Beyond the Sun is still climbing. Uh, we actually haven't seen this in a while. It's a pretty highly rated game, although I think it's kind of a niche game, and I think the look of it is not the best. So uh, I do think it's going to continue to climb, especially as more and more people get a chance to play it. And we have some stuff we saw before Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. So this one is continuing its climb. It's still staying pretty strong and consistent. I'm going to guess at this point that it's not going to dethrone season one from the top pandemic spot, but I do think it's going to hit the top 10. War of the Ring. Oh, so this is what actually pushed Spirit Island down. So this one, it's kind of unusual. This, this is a pretty heavy game, but maybe since, uh, I mean, Spirit Island's a good solo game. Potentially, since the pandemic is happening, maybe people are playing this more because, uh, you know, you're probably only going to play with someone that's vaccinated or uh, that is in your own household. Oh, Dune Imperium. So this one is almost to the top 10 or top 100. And this is probably going to be in the top 50. I don't see how it's not at, the, at this rate. So maybe, maybe about three more weeks, four more weeks, we'll see it in the top. 100. Marvel United. So this is interesting. Uh, this is kind of a lighter weight game, but I think they're doing another Kickstarter on this. And oh, the deliveries for I think all the uh, big Kickstarter backers are all coming out. So I think everyone with like all the add ons and stuff are getting their content now. So this will probably see a, a jump in ratings. I don't see this one hitting the top 100 just because it's a lighter weight game. I do know. A lot of people really like it, and I, I like the style of the minis, actually. And Oath. So I want to talk about this one. People are receiving their Oath back, which is actually pretty quick. I feel like this was just a year ago that it was on Kickstarter. And to have a game of this like size and scale come out that quickly on time really is a credit to the uh, designers and uh, and the company publishing it. Although this person says they're still waiting for North America delivery, but I think there was a lot of backers, so it's probably going to take a little while. And I think for some reason, the North America ships seem to be having a harder time uh, getting bookings right now. So, number 10, Asonia. I don't even know about this game. I feel like I've seen the cover, though. Uh, must be a new, probably a Kickstarter game based on the backing. So, let's see here. Crowdfunding Kickstarter. So this one must just be getting delivered. Waken Magic, Zombie Hordes, Fallen Nations. Only the most influential survives. This looks like a interesting kind of a day pool deck building or and hand management. It looks like a deck builder. Here it looks pretty decent. It's a kind of a small box game though. Some counters. Looks like off of like Venice maybe time period yeah i mean i don't think that we're going to see this one keep climbing just because it is a card game and typically like these smaller card games don't climb up the rankings uh very quickly but it'll be inter interesting to see as people get their copies so that's Asonia. dominant species marine so we've looked at this one a couple weeks for a couple weeks i think it's going to do well just because people that like dominant species are probably going to pick it up and I don't think many people play Dominant Species at the full six players anyway. 
So having a new version of it will, uh, I think, be popular. I don't know if we're going to see this one get too deep into the top 100, but you never know. So that's number nine, Dominant Species Marine. Number eight, Salmon Cane. So this is another one that I think I'm regretting backing or not backing at this point. Uh, it's had a few strong weeks, uh, a little bit lower this week, so we'll have to keep keep an eye on it. But it's got a really strong opening with these nines for the first hundred. I'll be interested to see how many backers actually get this in the next few months, and you know how the ratings are. But I think it's a solo game as well, and it's definitely, if I remember right, it's, it's basically a cooperative game. So it'll be interesting to see. You know how this differs from other cooperative games, like you know Spirit Island, for example, and Pandemic. So this is Solomon Kane, number eight, number seven, Tiny Epic Pirates. So this one had a big jump here. I thought this was just on Kickstarter. Let's see, Gameland Games pre-orders. Let's see what this thing says. So this is. Pirates take to the high seas. So this is kind of a, it, it looks like a pick up and deliver movement rondelle game. Hmm. Interesting. Unreleased games. So let's see if anyone's actually gotten this thing. Okay. I think it's still on Kickstarter. Maybe people. My last Kickstarter. So. Maybe people are, I, I don't know if Game One releases like uh, a, online uh, things you can play. I do know they're a very popular publisher because all their Tiny Epic games are cool. I think a lot of people like them because they are so small. And if you're a big board game collector, you know, having a small game that has a lot of stuff in it is pretty ideal. Huh? Everything fits in here. This does look, I mean, I would say it looks pretty good. The art looks good, and these little pieces look good. It's, I think it's hard to design a game that actually works and fits in this small box with as much stuff that's, that's in these games. I don't know. I bought a couple Tiny Epic games. I traded for a few, and I thought they were good for, for, the, for what they are. And I think it's great that they keep putting out new ones that kind of explore different areas of the uh, board game genre in this you know, package. So that is Tiny Epic Pirates. We'll have to wait for a while before we know how this one does. Number seven. Number six. Disney's Villas, Villainous Despicable Plot. So I think I already, I already have a copy of this. This thing came out, and it was actually, I think, a pretty good release. And the reason I got it was purely due to the inclusion of the Horned King in this expansion. I didn't know anything else about it. I've only played uh, Villainous a couple times, but just having the Black Cauldron in this game made me need to get this uh, once, you know, hopefully I can play with my kids in the near future. You know, I would say it's, it's Villainous. It's probably going to not be perfectly balanced. It's going to look really good, and it's going to have your Disney characters in it and be asymmetric. And I think that that is the charm to the game. And the fact that, you know, these standalone expansions exist, I think, are great. People can just get this game and play with up to three people, or they can add it and combine it with any of the other villainous games. And again, it's probably, like I said, probably not balanced completely, but I don't think you're playing this for the balance. I think you're playing this for the, uh, Asymmetric nature and the unique theming of the game and, and the look. I think these these things look great. The artwork looks really good. It, it's a extremely well produced game. Maybe one of uh, Ravensburger's best produced games in terms of like an IP production. I don't think it'll hit the top one hundred though, uh, but it'll probably do well. I think Villainous is is an overall has been doing extremely well, and there's. Lots of Disney villains, so these will keep coming out as long as they uh, Disney keeps making more villains. So it's number six, Disney Villainous, Despicable Plots. Number five, Street Fighter, the Miniatures Game. Now this one, I regret. I mean, I don't think the gameplay here is going to be uh, super amazing, and you can kind of see that with the 
I, mean, I guess the ratings were mixed. Um, it's just going to be a brawler type game. But the miniatures look so amazing in this game. I kind of wish I would have packed it just for the miniatures. I haven't been able to paint recently. I've been really busy, but I do want to post a video of me painting with my wife uh, some miniatures. So that'll be fun if we if we ever get back to that. I painted all the zombie side stuff from the first one, or a lot of it, as practice, and then uh, had to take a break. So it's number five, Street Fighter the Miniatures game. Number four, Cubitos. So we've talked about this one a couple, uh, for a few weeks it's been on the list. What's interesting this week is that Shut Up and Sit Down put out the review, which I think was a pretty positive review for the game. They had a good explanation for it. I think uh, I actually went back and watched Tom Vassell's review as well. I think both of them hit on good points, and I think it comes down to that I don't think this one's going to do as well as Space Base. I still am convinced about that. I think that the way the the dice management is done kind of slows down the game a little bit. And I think that it's very unique and I may end up picking up at some point just because I like quacks. And I think that this, the way this is done is going to be really fun. It's going to be similar to quacks, but maybe I think maybe a little bit more engaging if you get behind and maybe kind of making you want to push your luck a little bit more. And I like the fact that you can't, you know, essentially bust until after you have three uh, sides, and it, it kind of evens it out a little bit more. It makes the game pretty fun. I'm really interested in playing it. I don't think it's going to be a super strategic game, but it is going to be a fun push your luck game with a, looks like a lot of different combinations of stuff. So that's Cubitos. Number three is Bullets. So we talked about this one a few times. It's actually picked up ratings a little bit more, and I've seen it for sale now. Uh, it's a level 99 game, so the price is, is decently high. And the, you know, the artwork is like the level 99, you know, anime style artwork. I think it, you know, I think it's going to do okay. I don't, uh, I don't see this one hitting the top 100 though, just because I think it's scope is not as, uh, as big as some of the other level 99 games. So that's bullet. Number two, Adventures of Robin Hood. So we talked about this one. This is interesting that this, it looks like it just came out kind of without any announcement as far as I know. And it looks like a Legends of Andor reskin into the Robin Hood universe, which I think is going to do well. I don't think it's going to be, you know, pushing the top 100 by any means, unless it's got some like new tricks. But I think it's even a lighter weight Legends of Andor. And I think that people will like it. although. Uh, like I said, I, I don't see it hitting the top 100 just because it's it's kind of the same same system again. Number two, Adventures of Robin Hood, and the number one uh, climber this week is Red Rising. So this is interesting. This one uh, must be that a lot of pre-orders got delivered or something, or people finally got to play it. It's actually let's let's take a look at this. It's actually picking up uh, some some higher ratings uh, with the more recent uh, deliveries, which is actually good because it started out a little bit tepid here. And it, I think part of that may be that this is a, like a lighter weight game from Stonemaier. I think everyone, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of people think of Scythe with Stonemaier. A lot of people think of Tapestry, but you know, they make, they also, you know, design like a lighter weight game than that. Uh, they did uh, Beyond Two, Beyond Two Cities. I forget the exact name, but they also did uh, uh, the version of that with the Ma uh, Castles of Mad King Ludwig theme, which was a little bit more complicated. Uh, so this game, I think, is a kind of a classic Stonemaier production value. They have really solid artwork to go with the theme. They have the nice components with the jewels. They have the I guess I don't. I wonder if these come with it or not. They have the cubes. They have this thing that looks like a banana, I think. Um, and I think it, uh, you know, that in itself is very appealing. And I believe this is kind of modeled after Fantasy Realms. I know uh, Jamie Stegmeier actually uh, highly recommended Fantasy Realms. I played it. I think it's a really good, you know, card game. The only negative to it is the scoring, and maybe maybe the scoring is a little bit. Better. I haven't played it yet. Um, 
But I do think it's going to do well. I don't think it's likely to get in the top 50, but maybe the top 100. It's it's doing it's doing decent, and uh, uh, we'll just have to keep uh, keep waiting and see. So that is the top climbers for this week. Again, if you like this video, please like and please subscribe. Please take a look at our other videos. Thank you.